Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're texturing our grumpy mushroom. Now I've been through similar techniques before so check out the texturing of the gnome which is in the sculpting playlist which is in the description of this video. And if you're confused about nodes at all then check out Node School, it's another playlist and I'll put the link in the description. So I'll be giving a brief overview of the changes I've made and maybe some advancements in those texturing techniques. If you're interested in the grass then let me know and I'll do a quick tutorial on that as well. And remember to check out the playlists in the description and on my channel for other great courses. Now before I begin, it's important to understand that I'm using the Node Wrangler and you must have that installed in order to view the nodes like I am. So let's get started. So I've got the top cap selected and you can see apart from some slight banding around the place that the highlights are kind of yellow and then it's got a few variations of color there's a bit of green in there and the crevices are dark and the highlights are light so we're using a similar technique to the ones I showed with shading the gnome so as a quick reminder I'm using the pointiness node remember you have to be in cycles for that to work and that goes into the color ramp and that gives it some extra shading so dark areas for the crevices light areas for the ridges and that's going into this mix RGB with the overlay blending mode now for the color if we have a look at the color ramp, you can see that I've got my pointiness node here again and the color ramp is separating out the colors. I kind of like the weird banding effect, that kind of gives it a bit of variation, but if you want to get rid of that, then you just have to play with your settings slightly, moving them around to increase or decrease the effect in certain areas. So you can really see the difference it makes just moving these very slightly you can get very different looks. So I'll quickly go through some information about the color ramp, let's delete this one for now shift A to add and it's under converter color ramp I use this node an awful lot and we're coming in from the pointiness and into the color if I press control shift left click on the color ramp that will show us just the color ramp so it's going into the viewer node you must have the node wrangler installed to do that and I talk about that in the previous episode so in the color ramp again with the pointiness node in we can just bring in the values and we see that pointiness effect and the magic number is around 0.4 here and around 0.6 here but to add color we can simply click on one of these and change the color I tend to go for bluey colors which are supposed to be cooler and bring the tone down so it's going towards black and you can just about see that in there and then for the whites maybe some warmer tones so across to the yellows okay so we can see a tiny bit of an indication of color there and just a reminder you can't be in material preview mode the pointiness node doesn't work you must be in rendered mode and in cycles okay so if we want to add to this we can press the add icon and it will add a point and then we can change the color of this let's go for red and now the midtones are red and we can click on that again and add another one in and now we can change this around and maybe give it a sort of green tint and you can see what's going on in there those sort of middle areas here towards the darks are going green so you can really play with this and have some fun whatever you click on and press the plus sign it will add one to the left of that and then you can sort of pull it around and change things up and then just adjust the shapes if you want more reds you've got to sort of find the magic sweet spots but you can see there it's got a sort of weird interesting glow to it generally speaking you'll probably want to go in terms of tone upwards so darker here lighter here so let's click on this middle one for example click on the color and we're right bang in the center I'm going to move this across the side and move in on our shape if I click on this again and change the tone you can see it going darker and lighter so that does have a big effect so let's see what that one looks like if I click on the overlay now we should get a bit of a boost from our color ramp and then into the principal PSDF and it gives it a very different look now the other aspect that I've done here is a Musgrave texture into the roughness so if I click on the Musgrave text you can see what that looks like and then I've changed it with the color ramp so if I click on the color ramp this is control shift left click you can see the color ramp because I've changed this black here to a very light gray it's giving it more roughness so if I go from the Musgrave texture into the roughness and then click on my principled BSDF you can see it's very shiny because it's got so much black in it which will give us no roughness and therefore shininess kind of looks like it's been raining doesn't it or it's got gloss on it now if I go from the color ramp you can see some shiny areas but not too much and as a reminder 
that's what we're getting through. So the gray bits are gonna be very slightly shiny and the white bits are gonna be completely rough. So once again, Musgrave into the color amp and then into the principal BSDF. Now this does depend a bit on your lighting as well. If I just click on the overlays, you can see I've got three point lighting. If you want more on that, then check out my video on three point lighting. Okay, let's zoom back in and click on my mushroom face type thing. The only other thing I've got here, because I've got the same thing going on with my color ramp, I've plugged a color ramp into a color ramp just for an extra boost. So if I click on this one, you can see it's got the shading and then an extra boost with this one. It's got very dark bits in there to give it that sort of painterly feel. And then into the overlay, and that's the color coming from this one. Just a variation of color, very light, very subtle. Into our overlay here, and then into the principal BSDF. Same thing with the Musgrave texture for the reflections. I think that's really important just to give it a sort of bit of realism, even though it is very stylized. And lastly, the bump. So this is my usual way of doing a sort of bumpy material that looks a little bit sort of clay-like. It's just a Veronoid texture. One with a smaller scale here, and one with a bigger scale there. So you can see what the smaller one looks like. And then the bigger one is finer, and then we mix them together with just a normal mix node in this case. Into the color ramp, to sort of soften it a bit and then you can see it into the bump with a very low strength and it just gives that very subtle bump there as you can see in the final image quite subtle probably a little bit sharp in places but you can soften that up just by playing with the settings okay so that's how i textured the mushroom remember to watch out for the grass tutorial coming next so thanks for watching and i hope this helps